so I'm Dr. Mani Pavitra and I'm back today with another wonderful person with us and that is none other than Sri Devi Jasti. <laughs> welcome, welcome to Million Moms. She's not just a dear friend but I've known her work from the past 10 years and the quality of work that she delivers and the dedication and love with which she works on every aspect of food is just mind-blowing Sri. Thank you so much for doing that kind of work that you're doing for us. Because she's a trendsetter in the industry of food, especially in Hyderabad. You actually changed the palate of our Hyderabadis. who We are so used to biryani <laughs> and <laughs> uh, meat and oil. But thanks to you, we are, we are appreciating good food. So, so glad. <laughs> so glad. One palate at a time. One palate at a time. <laughs> One palate at a time. <laughs> yes, it's slowly changing. I'm so glad. And thank you for having me and uh, appreciate your work i mean you've been doing so much work and uh, i'm really happy to be here and sharing my story with mothers out there yeah you know what uh, most of the mothers um, because we don't have examples around us right now in the mundo ante joint family lo attono evro kan chuse vallam but man katla layer examples so that's why we are working out with mothers who have been doing their best in their journey so you are one of those awesome mothers that I know of. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so can you share your pregnancy journey? How did it start? Did you plan to get pregnant? Oh boy, I <laughs> never planned. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, there weren't uh, role models in my um, vicinity or in my life after I got married. Mm -hmm. And um, being pregnant was something so... Uh, something that um, I didn't know of. I, I um, you know, giving birth to a child, uh, bringing him or her up to be a happy uh, and have them lead a fulfilling life is uh, such a joyous uh, thing, but also comes with a great responsibility. Yes. And I wasn't going to take such a responsibility <laughs> <laughs> just like that. <laughs> I had to know what I'm getting into. Because um, I, I definitely knew that um, it's a lifetime commitment. It's I'm lifetime. really surprised at how people just just do it, you know, yeah. just have a child. And uh, well, circumstances and um, circumstances that I, um, I wasn't in India. I got married elsewhere and I married a foreigner. And I wasn't sure, first of all, I wanted to make sure I'm okay mm. and I'm taking care of myself and I know what I'm doing in my life, all that stuff I had to deal. I wanted to be sure of that first before I expand the family and, you know, get into more responsibilities. So that was going on. Um, it, it, I think uh, it, took, it took a while for me to even uh, consider having a, a baby. And, but every time uh, when I when we thought of having a baby or just the thought comes or somebody first five years I think both parents and in-laws you can imagine yeah, from both pressure. cultures <laughs> coming and you know uh, when 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 right. and then I think after a few years they just thought that probably they have some problems just leave them alone <laughs> be nice to them you know they just left us alone yeah. but meanwhile here every birthday you're like oh you're 30 oh you're 31 you know because you've been already married for X number of years maybe you should have a child but then, you know, this, this uh, commitment, it's a huge commitment. Uh, you're working hard or after working hard, you're having um, fun, a lot of fun, and you don't see how a baby can fit. Um, so it took some time, um, but biological clock, I am forever grateful to Mother Nature that it will just somehow tell you when you need what right. if you are mindful of yes. it and uh, I think that's what happened to me um, and also one of the reasons why I was able to postpone without fear is that I was taking care of myself awesome yeah. I was taking care I mean being in being in nutrition being a foodie um, I was I mean it's not like I ate so clean at all times but there was a evolution it was always cleaner and better and better so I, uh, I somehow innately know that uh, my biological age is probably a little less than my chronological age <laughs> because of how I was eating. Because studies show over and over again that the health of the baby uh, directly depends on the diet of the mother. True. And that starts 
even before you conceive, right? The, child, right. the health of the child depends on your health before you conceive, yes. not only yours, yeah. and you're also the husband or the partner, right? True. Um, so, um, so I was always like, okay, I'm taking care of myself, I'm exercising, I'm doing yoga, I should be all right, I should be all right. I had this feeling that right. I could wait or, or I didn't have the guts to <laughs> do it. <laughs> so, but then uh, when I decided or when, when the time came, um, it was well planned because now you waited for so long, you better do it right, right? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, mm, did, did everything that I could. Uh, starting from cleansing yourself, meaning for me cleansing is uh, not um, having any kind of chemical exposure True. because they sit as toxins, they, sit, they directly affect the fetus and, I, and who knows how long it will take for them to wash away from your body. True. So don't get exposed to them as much as possible. Mm. So I stopped going to salons and I mean it's not like I did so much even for little things like you know didn't want that and of course a house was uh, completely uh, void of any chemical wow. um, cleaners and da, 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 all that for one year. I mean, I was already in that journey, Process. but I was uh, just a little bit more careful now that I want to get pregnant. Wow. And I ate really clean, though I was eating um, uh, some fish. And then I was worried about the heavy metal toxicity mm -hmm. from different kinds of fish that come. So you're more mindful, you know, you're eating even more clean. And uh, so that's how I planned my pregnancy. And of course, uh, once, once um, I got pregnant, um, you know, learning about how you want to have your birth, natural birth, hypnothera hypnobirthing, lamas, what do you want to take? So the whole nine yards, that was the thing. That was, that was what I wanted to do. Um, wanted to do it right. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to be a mother, a full-time mother. So I finished my work, took time off, had a child, and, and told myself that until he or she's six years old, I will not work. But story changed a little bit. When he was four, that I realized, oh boy, he doesn't need me so much. <laughs> <laughs> I better find myself some work. Wow. Um, basically, went back to work at that time. Awesome. Man, your story itself is an inspiration. Because a lot of us are forced into it, you know, like the family pressure is there. But yeah. to, to be able to take that decision, and you were saying you were able to take, make that choice because of the clean eating that you had followed. Well, no, the choice is because, I mean, I, I, didn't, I didn't have my parents' influence on me or in-laws' influence on me every day. So mm -hmm. I still, I was I know. mature enough to tell them right. the reasons why, you know, and... Um, and I think that's no. a very big lesson for, for us as moms because we are okay till 2-3 years but beyond that when there's a lot of pressure, we succumb to pressure mm. without even uh, putting ourselves behind and you know many important things would be happening in our career at that particular point yes. of time. Yes, yes. Because that's also a peak of our youth and our yeah. energy and all of that. But still we just succumb to pressure, we don't know how to talk. So the confidence I think, it's the confidence. See, for me, I think uh, not just faith, it's, I was, I was taking care of myself. Why will I not have a, a normal pregnancy? Why will I, uh, why should I worry about not having a healthy child? I remember, you know, uh, from my time, uh, every auntie that I used to meet after third year, they started telling me, uh, you know, we lo pills me do naru in the roj lo. And mm. finally, they are not conceiving. IVF kelal so chindi, all chinchu. Meanwhile, your generation is advanced right now. So mm. you guys are playing around with your uh, natural hormonal cycle, mm. and maybe mm. you you will end up not becoming a mother because of the uh, mm. thing. You know, they try to mm. scare us. Also, you know, being on birth control for extended <laughs> amount of years also is not such a great thing in the end for right. health of a woman. Mm. Uh, so that's another reason. Mm. Uh, in my case, I think I'm. So natural <laughs> that uh, even that you know I followed a natural uh, cycle and rhythm, right. so I didn't have to have hormonal 
yes. influence on me. Yeah. So that's that's another beautiful thing. Wonderly, I got this subject out. <laughs> <laughs> because talking about birth control now. <laughs> because these are the things which most mothers are not are hesitant to talk with each other. Yeah. And we as friends, I think we can. I think we can. We and can also talk. for me, there's another thing. Okay, accidents could happen, right? Exactly. So then you'll take care of the child just fine because you know right. that you will be fine. Mm -hmm. You will take care mm -hmm. of the child. Mm -hmm. You know, just fine. Right. Even for me, I didn't use birth control even for, I didn't take any medicine on me, but yeah, I followed the natural cycle and took precaution on those particular days. That's so, it. So, uh, yeah. it was very easy to conceive. The day we decided, okay, now this month we are going to conceive, we were able to conceive. It's because I was very aware of the cycles Cycle. and yes, rhythms yes. and when Similar. we respect our body, when we do good exercise, when we eat clean food yes. and when we are conscious, we know. Even before the result, I knew like, okay, I'm pregnant, now I need to, you know, <laughs> it, yeah, it was yeah. that. But see, that's for the people who take care of themselves, mm -hmm. right? Now, I don't want people there to uh, worry if they haven't been taking care of themselves or if they haven't eaten well when they were pregnant, uh, you know, to accept and do our best from now on. And, uh, that's another wonderful one, you know, yeah. Yeah, because I get calls from mothers saying, oh, I conceived, uh, but you know, I, I, I was not at all taking care, I want to terminate, mm. I'm like, no, mm. it's okay, yeah, you know, baby knows very, how to take care of yeah, itself, yeah. it's good if you can take care, but it's, for whatever it's reason. It's optimal, because especially these days, um, birth defects, I mean, it's been, but now it's more and more because of our lifestyles and because of what we are eating, um, you know. Not only birth defects, uh, all kinds of um, nutrient deficiency related True. problems are out there and um, food is, the food that's coming to our table is not safe anymore unless you pay attention to it. Uh, things have changed so much, you can't take uh, nourishing yourself so casually, mm. right? So people do need to pay attention to what they're eating and, um, and not panic but, but um, question anything that comes to your table and where you're going to put in whatever you're going to put into your mouth because that is going to make a difference in uh, not only your health but the health of the fetus and your child. Right. So uh, why, how, what was the passion for nutrition? How did you start about that? How did I start nutrition? Wow, it's just always there. Uh, food has been, I guess, being a foodie. Uh, I come from a family like the, of foodies and you know, uh, my dad's colleagues are all agricultural scientists. This was all around food and um, I wanted to study nutrition mm. and that's how I studied nutrition. But all that helped me really, um, I think, I think the more, see, when you're young, um, the, the reason why you want to eat well is to keep your weight under control right. or maybe the first the skin <laughs> and then the weight uh, but then as you grow older and then when it's a childbearing age it comes in handy for that mm. um, you know yeah. and then also just 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 in general mothers you know first it's um, pregnancy then it's uh, going forward menopause da 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 uh, nutrition is what keeps you uh, strong hormonally physically and mentally as well and emotionally it's got that much effect true uh, it is truly like they say you are what you eat exactly right? exactly and uh, i feel that the most important education for us is missing big time in our regular curriculum i feel everyone right from the time they're growing up they should be taught nutrition but sadly we're taught math we're taught uh, social we're taught all those subjects but like what you eat is like Perfect. every day you eat yes. and it makes you but we don't know what goes into it. I know. So can you talk a little bit more about um, uh, the deficiency of protein especially in Indian diets that we see especially mm. the vegetarian diets. Can you throw some light on that? So how we are deficient uh, with protein. You know first of all people are talking in the terms of macros. Carbs, proteins, fats you know. Uh, I think if you were to eat whole foods foods as whole entirety that comes from nature. You don't have to talk about uh, carbs and proteins and fats and all that. Uh, you get just enough protein. The reason why people are not getting enough nutrients or enough protein is because uh, it's not complete. They're not eating whole foods, Okay. right? Mm -hmm. If you're eating whole foods, um, just simple food can give you everything. Mm -hmm. if you, you take away something from here, and you take away something from there and you artificially fortify with something else and your body needs the right kind of nutrients in certain 
um, proportions to make it absorb. You can't, you can't have just calcium without magnesium, and you can't have, you can't have it absorb, absorb unless you have enough vitamin D. True. Right. right. So it's a big, it's a simple but a, a big science. Right. It's very simple, very logical. Mm. We don't have to. Um, you know, just be killing ourselves as to, oh, I ate that, I ate this, oh, I'm short of this, I'm short of that. Don't have to go through all that. You know, have a few food groups. It's not through carbs, da, da, da. But uh, there are your fruits, your vegetables, your seeds and nuts, and your legumes, lentils and legumes, and your grains and millets, and, you know, th that's food. And then what you do with those foods, how you cook them or how you sprout them or how you ferment them makes a difference as to how they affect you, how you can absorb, right? right. So simple, wholesome foods, uh, gently processed and treated, uh, consumed with care and love uh, is all we need. And, um, you know, to spend some time around food. No matter how busy we are, right? Um, we have to. We have to spend time around food. Uh, there's no choice. That's that's one of the. That is the biggest thing that's going to make a difference in how you feel and how you look. How can you not spend time on that? Yeah. Either you have. To, you should. I mean, if you're not growing, at least know where it's coming from and how it's processed, who's cooking for you, what kind of oils are used, what are you doing with that food? But Sri, in our busy lifestyle, that's the last thing on our mind. And with Swiggy and all these apps available, forget about cooking and doing stuff, we are just ordering stuff left, right yeah, and center. But then demand, yes. demand for good stuff to be coming to you. Mm. Don't accept anything less. Mm. Why should you? And right? why are we living for? You yeah, know, what like, are we living for? If, you, if you're not healthy, you can't enjoy anything. Where is happiness from? And if happiness is coming from food, food gives you happiness multifold, mm. right? One is it directly gives you a comfort mm. because that's what mothers, you know, baby's not comfortable, baby's needing some emotional support. What do you do? You give milk. milk. You give your milk, right. mother's milk. Right. And that's full of fat, full of sugar. Mm. Ah, it makes you comfortable, oh. right? So that's what we are looking for. So, But then you need to give your body that good fat, that good sweet, mm. right? Mm. And that's what you wanted. That's what makes you satiated, satisfied. You're taken care of. When you do crash diets with void of lots of things, uh, you're deprived, you're emotionally deprived and you'll be longing, you'll be longing for things. Your body is missing on nutrients. That is what is making you long. Mm. True. Long. You, you, all these cravings are an indication of something that's missing, missing from our diet. Missing your body. Yeah, right. yeah exactly. Yeah. So, um, instead of doing crash diets, follow a whole foods nutrition as a lifestyle. It's not a diet that you do for a month. It's not a diet that you do for two months. Maybe you want to get into a certain uh, specific diet for a little amount of time to get you going, to get you going. But um, as a, you know, lifestyle, uh, as a change. lifestyle change is mm -hmm. what you want to do. Then you can, you know, you are, your children are going to learn from you, True. right? So you get yourself together mm -hmm. first mm -hmm. and learn. And it's not, I always say, it's not so complicated. It's not a rocket science. Come on, um, people from, uh, you know, forever in every tradition, they knew what to feed themselves with. They knew how to take care of themselves. They knew how to protect their beautiful bodies. And, and that's what they gave it to the generations following. They, were, they knew what, what does a body need to have a healthy baby. It's, it's all innate in us. You don't have to complicate it. Right. Just follow a natural food diet. So another thing I wanted to ask you, because anyways, we touched base on the topic, lactation and weight loss. Mm. The moment mother has a child, she, she, the first thought is, okay, now I want to get back in shape. You know, Take though she's a lactation man. <laughs> Take it easy. You've gotten to that stage in nine, ten months right it is going to take some time to go back and don't shock your body it's it's just i mean i remember that feeling right i was like in awe oh my god all the changes that happened to my body naturally look what you have what you brought out, out a life <laughs> it's not a small thing 
it's not a small thing, it's a very important matter and you've done it and uh, your body was able to do it and now it will take some time naturally, to, just like how, we, how it knew to grow the fetus, how to make you have a, a baby grow in your fetus, it knows exactly the same way how to take away what is not yours, what is not needed anymore, now the baby is out. So what, what it needs is good food so that you get your quality milk to give to your baby. So what does good food mean? Plant based mostly. Mm. You eat uh, food that is in entirety. When you're eating your fruits and vegetables, eat them like they are. Some vegetables need, it, need cooking. And you need whole grains and, uh, and lentils, whole grains uh, with their germ intact so that you get uh, all the minerals. People don't uh, think enough about, see that's what we spoke about, mi micros and macros we thought about, but micros are so important for health of yourself and the baby. You need that magnesium, manganese, molybdenum, zinc, copper, all these you'll get from these whole foods. So um, you want to eat those, you know, lentils, grains, sprouts, um, lots of greens, seeds, nuts, soak them, um, just enjoy, enjoy eating with these foods and uh, it helps to be a little creative or you can learn to be a little creative with food and if you enjoy those, the same foods are going to help you, uh, give you good quality milk and enough of it and uh, also the same food will help you lose weight when you need to lose weight. I really strongly discourage people from getting into um, heavy duty gymming and all that after uh, immediately after the baby is born. Um, studies show that at least six months you want to do your regular walking, stretching, yoga, walk around, do your work, but not lose weight, lose weight, lose weight, you know, yeah. counting calories. Oh, yes, I've done, uh, I've earned thousand calories. No, 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 you're putting stress, you're putting your body under stress and that is going to get you in through your milk to the baby and why, why relax? Yeah, relax. Absolutely, absolutely and if you, right. if you gained your weight naturally throughout your pregnancy, just as naturally you will lose. True. Um, don't take, um, don't get into shortcuts. For me, um, I was doing my regular exercise, but by the time I hit one year, one and a half year, I was breastfeeding my child throughout, like 24 by 7 on demand and it was so surprising, like every day, slowly I started losing weight and suddenly I touched my pre-marriage weight without doing anything extra, I didn't go on a diet, well, I, was, you, I was You were eating. doing extra work with the baby, with the baby. <laughs> <laughs> that was extra work, yes. But yes. Uh, the challenge with some of the mothers face is, um, especially in our uh, Telangana Andhra region, they give them bread and milk. You know, bread and milk, bread and milk, bread and milk. For and milk production. For milk production and they make Come them fat. On. Like the mother wouldn't have gained so much weight in her uh, yeah. pregnancy, but the poor ones gain so much more weight. Because they want the milk for the baby. Yeah. But quality of milk is so important, not just the quantity. Exactly. Right? And uh, listen, just like the cow eat a lot of greens, <laughs> <laughs> you get a lot of quality milk. Yeah, greens are fantastic. Uh, sprouts, microgreens, it's it just makes such a big difference in milk production. Just each day makes a difference. One meal of certain kind will show the results in, you yes. know, mil yeah, in the next mm. feed. Mm. It's that direct. So, they, but some mothers have this question: when they have this uh, too much of grains, they feel gassy. Uh, they feel it's not uh, suiting their body. You mean legumes? Yes. Yeah. So yes. they should prepare them properly. Mm. See, no. Um, fast cooking with legumes. Right. You need to soak them, uh, you need to wash off that water, put new water and now you cook and the froth that comes on the top should be taken out and then put new water and now you cook that and that's when you, you there's something called phytic acid on, on that, that needs to be washed off and that's when you can easily digest and absorb the nutrients that are in there. Awesome. See, only a nutritionist can say this. Otherwise, we'll be like, yeah, I cook it well. Oh, uh, why does it cause yeah, that? The baby is colic. Huh. I am having gas and I'm passing it on to the baby. Uh, so I don't want to eat lentils, even though they're rich in protein exactly. and I need it. Uh, now, because I don't want the baby to be crying. Um, so, yeah, 
process it nicely and also um, look at be mindful sometimes food combinations won't mm -hmm. work let's say you ate a very um, healthy meal you cook the lentils like you're supposed to cook you steamed your vegetables just right um, and you ate everything instead of dessert you want to have a piece of fruit <laughs> you get bloated <laughs> That sugar sitting on the top, right. you know, it, it's not healthy to be. So follow basic food combinations. And, and uh, like uh, in Andhra, if you see, it's so sad. They mix up carb with sugar. Like they eat fruit after a dinner. I'm like, it shouldn't go like that. The combination is not good. Mm. So you want to talk a little bit more. What is the right time to eat fruit? A fruit should be eaten on empty stomach. That is the ideal, ideal way to eat fruit. It will nicely cleanse, it will go. Fruit only takes like 15-20 minutes for it to go through your system. Whereas your meal, even if it's a sattvic, vegetarian, vegan meal, it takes at least three hours. So eat your fruit first and take a few minutes break and then you eat your meal. And it also helps you to maybe not crave for a dessert afterwards, mm -hmm. something sweet, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Or first thing in the morning, nicely enjoy your fruit or any time between meals mm -hmm. is a good idea to eat fruit. Mm -hmm. So um, another question here is, uh, uh, if you look at um, mothers, one, two years post the birth of the child, that's the time when they are actually putting on more weight mm. compared to the pregnancy or during their lactation phase. So um, do you think that's the right time to uh, go on a diet? They're not breastfeeding the child, yeah, they're yeah. not doing anything, but still like... Why are they gaining weight, stress? Are they all stressed out? They don't know how to take care of the child. Why would you gain weight at that time? Well, it's time to take care of yourself. <laughs> <laughs> get back, get back on the mat, go to the gym, walk, and you need that break. You might be spending too much time with your child. I doubt though. Uh, what I noticed in our um, society here is that uh, not many mothers spend so much time with the child. My understanding, they're giving it to, they're giving the babies to nannies and, you know, preschool, all kinds of stuff. I feel, I feel, um, spend time with your children, run around, play with them, read rhymes with them, read books, uh, be silly, uh, enjoy, and take that break and go to the gym, walk, whatever, you need that. Yeah. I think that's what... Uh, yeah, that, that's the perfect thing that they should be doing at that point of time. Mm. Yeah. So, uh, if some mother wants to learn from you, mm. the art and science of food and what to eat, what are whole grains, because a lot of us don't know, mm. how can they reach out to you? Boy, there are so many ways to reach, uh, reach us. Uh, I have workshops that you can take. I give talks. Um, what else? We have open markets every Saturday. We have open market that you can come and check out and taste and, you know, and take home some. And Can you talk uh, about what, what you have at your place, Shri, in the open market? And we have at Vibrant Living, we, we basically take care of your food needs, seriously, <laughs> right? Uh, if you can cook at home, take nice, you know, quality ingredients home and make good food at home. You can watch my YouTube videos for some inspiration and some recipes. Um, or if you are not, uh, uh, you're not keen on cooking yourself and you don't trust your cooks and uh, staff, uh, you can order food from here, from here. you can sign up mm -hmm. and you can get your breakfast, lunch, dinners, bre uh, green juices and smoothies and vegetable juices, all kinds of stuff can be delivered. We have lots of vegan choices. Vibrant Living is a vegan company. Uh, we make sure that you get enough of everything that you need as a vegan. Um, Amazing. As vegetarians, we are not able to take care of our diet and with, with a vegan company, that is such a path-breaking thought, uh, Sri. It's not that difficult. Like it's I said, difficult, those few things, yeah. that fermentation, mm. that uh, sprouting, that malting and taking that extra step and using the, you know, using the seeds like your, your sesame seeds. We are blessed, the nature around us, we are blessed with all kinds of uh, wonderful fruits that our body needs. I mean, it's a grand plan by nature, I suppose. Um, so use them, use them nicely, use them tastily that you want to eat that. You can't just have health. You need to have taste in that food. And that's what we try to do here at Vibrant Living. For me, taste is super important. Um, this, 
there's no way you can get me to eat a meal. <laughs> if it's not tasty, what a waste of stomach space. Exactly. Uh, stomach uh, real estate. Yeah, and a uh, lot of people, uh, they think the moment they have to go on a diet or good food, they think good food is, is bland. They feel good How does good and bland or untasty go hand in hand? No, uh, it doesn't. Good means it's not only good for you, it's also making you feel good. Awesome. And you can only feel good when it's tasty. Mm. And you can make nature, foods in nature are very tasty by themselves. We just manipulate them, we do this, we do that, we mix it wrong and all that and make it, make it not so tasty, I think. Um, but otherwise, if they're in, you know, of course, cooking is a science and art. Uh, so a little bit of, a little few tips and a um, little bit of knowledge. You can have fun in the kitchen uh, if you're not keen on having fun in the kitchen and come here and get what you need. Exactly. And uh, can we talk about your entrepreneurial journey? How did you decide to build up a vegan company, especially in Hyderabad, which is like, you know, yeah, all over right. India? Yeah. Hyderabad is the biggest meat eating <laughs> population. That is exactly the reason. Honestly, this is what happened. I, huh, interestingly, I am not a vegan but I don't eat meat and I don't use uh, dairy either but there are these occasions that I would have um, natural cheese uh, some aged cheese that when I travel or some you know something yes. like that mm -hmm. or but what I thought was in Hyderabad people are not eating enough plant-based foods true true I agree okay and uh, I thought whatever they're not having I want to give uh, because that's needed yes. they need it yes they need it they come to me for help and um, I said okay I'll help you <laughs> this is what you need because that is, seems to be the hardest thing for them to do it at home because they're not used to yes right and another thing we don't have options now see uh, if I want to order something in meat I have hundred places to order from mm. but if, if I want to order some really good uh, nutritious plant-based food there's no place that I can order yeah, from. Yeah, slowly, slowly it's get, getting better, better, I think. Eight yeah. years ago, nine years ago when I started zero. doing all this, nobody knew what a smoothie was. Nobody knew chia seeds were, right? Look how much has changed and how I was selling. I still, I do send bo uh, my smoothies and stuff in bottles. And explain. Uh, and explain what is in this okay this has this this has the superfood berries in it they're good for this they're good for that you know i explain and, and I, I love gave. that about your food you know because i know exactly what's what's in there and what is the nutrition is giving to me and i tell my kids uh, okay you had this right can you explain what's there on your plate do you think that's the right nutrition that you're taking what do you think mother should focus on when they are feeding their kids instead of just making sure they are eating something. Yeah. Don't you think that awareness needs to be done? Oh my goodness, oh what a topic. Listen, I have a huge problem with how we are training our children to be so mindless of what they are eating. Okay, um, children by birth, uh, they know how much they want to eat, how much they are full with and what they want to eat also. Exactly. Instead, what we do, we distract them with television, stories crows, burr, whatever, distract them and feed them. That's, and you're force feeding your children. And later when they're eating too much, you tell them, oh, you're eating too much, right? And you put those little kids on diet. That's cruel. You should know better, okay? Um, there's, I think uh, in Western, I, I like that part in the West, where they put you on this high chair, okay? And you leave food there. I mean, after a certain age, there's something about feeding. It's also nice, but after a certain age, you keep them on that and you leave your child with X number of minutes that you decide, maybe 20 minutes, and let the child eat what he or she needs. End. Mm. Until two years, you should let them play with the food. Let them throw. That's how they learn. The, they learn about life. It's okay until two years. But from that time onwards, just leave them for certain amount of time let them eat whatever they want and then they go play and next meal they'll definitely be hungry I know easier said than done <laughs> I had trouble you know I, I was doing this to my kids and everyone around me was flabbergasted they're playing with the food they're throwing the food I'm like they are babies how do you expect a baby to eat food perfectly yeah, they're not. in the process of learning oh, they go to spill food them. yeah you're yeah. restricting them and it's not it's not a good idea, right? And also, a lot of mothers mash the food, like, like a paste. Pop them, they, as if they don't have any taste buds. Yeah. They have very refined taste buds. And that is the reason why you don't want to give all kinds of mixed stuff, because it's 
just gets them confused. So that's why they tell you to add. Well, that's one of the reasons why you want to introduce children to one food at a time. You're developing their palate and also their digestion is not completely set. So you're, learn you're letting the body learn mm -hmm. food. So uh, don't be mashing, I know. Oh my God, one of the reasons why I didn't want to have children for a long time is that I couldn't stand that smell of mushed up food. <laughs> like, God, I have to feed that kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Before I knew, yeah, right? right. Uh, so, uh, yeah, you just give them different. I mean, okay, that's a, I guess another entire show of what to give children at mm -hmm. what age, mm -hmm. um, how many fruits, how many vegetables, how do you give vegetables, how do you give grains. I mean, I guess we could. I, talk I think they should reach on out and to you. on and on forever <laughs> about all this stuff because it's all simple, but you need to know. Right. Once knowledge is so powerful especially when it comes yeah. to, you know, raising What's your going children. To you. Yeah, exactly. And it'll be your most precious thing in your life, yeah, right? Yeah, it's your responsibility to teach your children and to show your children uh, what food means, what food will mean to them and what it means to them. So, um, learn. Yeah. First, take, and you cannot teach a child by uh, not doing it yourself. <laughs> you cannot. You have to do it first. Only then they will learn. Only then. Only they then. might pretend that they've learned, but no. no. <laughs> you have to do it first. Yeah. And, and I think it's a mistake to um, make two kinds of foods in the family um, for parents and for children after a certain age. Um, they should all eat the same good, excellent food together yeah. as a family. Hmm. So, uh, can you talk about uh, your motherhood? Mm. And then you setting up a new company, and you coming back here, settling down. Mm. So many things that so you were facing from all no? Yeah. How did you handle that? Well, I waited long enough to have this child, so then, then everything came as a rush. Um, how did that happen? You know what? It's not planned. Mm. It's not planned. Uh, it's almost like I went with the flow. Mm. Went with the flow. We were uh, living a very bohemian life uh, bef before I got pregnant because. There is this, oh, I'm going to have a baby, I'm going to lose freedom, so whatever you want to do, do it now. So what is that? Travel. <laughs> Travel and live in different countries and stay as long as you want and work from there, do all that stuff. So doing all that stuff, um, did that. And then um, when I had the child, I mean, that's why I wanted to do that. So when you have a child, you already know. No, okay, I've seen you the whole do whatever. World, guys. No, but then we still traveled <laughs> until we. I didn't stop traveling as a as a pregnant person, and it was the most comfortable time to travel is when he was nursing. Uh. It was like this food is always there on you. <laughs> Only you fetch for yourself, right? I would wear a sling and traveled in Europe, traveled all over the world, and um, and uh, during that time, I ended up coming to India to see my parents and uh, you know have my son spend some time with my family and then I realized hmm you know I like it here <laughs> I'll spend a little bit more time so each year uh. I would spend a little more a little more and um, I think by the time he was four years of age I realized that um, I want to do uh, I want to get back to work a little bit and I didn't want to work outside of the house um, because once again I was not ready. I wanted a little bit but right. not completely. So I started a home based business and that was most comfortable for me. A lot of, I had a lot of offers to work. I had also at Apollo Wellness which I worked for part time. Mm -hmm. I just could not see myself having a, a full time business or job mm. uh, so I started part-time and slowly I got more and more involved as I felt that I could handle more. and well listen it's not like all was all is such a rosy story there were sacrifices that I had to make mm. I think all of us have to make, have sacrifices. To make sacrifices there was this beautiful free life mm. uh, come, but then that is going to happen anyway it's going to school I mean we made him miss school several years, <laughs> a few months a year, uh, but as he got older mm. and I also got more serious with my work mm. and you know society, people, uh, my clients uh, kind of demanded what is now, mm. you know, mm. uh, you give talks, you give workshops and you teach and they're like, oh, you do it so easily but we're not able to do it at home, you know, because they don't right. have practice, right? Mm. So can, but can we have the same? So you set up a kitchen mm. and oh, meals are going fine, uh, but what about snack time? Mm. What about our children's snack time? So came the line of snacks. 
and we love those snacks street like our wow. whole family is addicted to your healthy snacks i am so proud <laughs> of my snacks of our food generally because when pregnant women come from everyone it's like hey i can i can like so happily proudly say hey, you should eat this because you should eat there's only ingredients that you should be eating for it could be anything it could be lactation for your bones for your protein for your omega oils uh, for strength for anti aging for everything yeah. everything absolutely right? and they're so nutritious and lo like really delicious and tasty yeah tasty. because i took the uh, inspiration of the recipes from our traditional recipes from my grandmas and aunts and mother all those recipes so it's comforting for us it's mm. like oh the taste is something so you know my known. home yeah. known right yeah. but then they're given in one very uh, fun and easy and convenient way yeah. yeah first of all don't compare with others, others you exactly. have to follow your own mm. body signals understand when something is wrong your body will tell you have to listen to it and understand and take natural ways to heal mm. heal right right take um, all kinds of alternative therapies i'm a big fan of 40 hours of labor wow. natural birth only because of uh, learnings that i have learned the hypnobirthing and how to relax uh, meditate um, just because you're pregnant you don't have to stop working out obviously right so i did prenatal yoga oh they all helped i think especially uh, in nuclear families and i was pregnant when i was in the united states uh, i don't have my aunts there my mom i don't know anyone who's pregnant really mm -hmm. right and how do i know what to do what to expect uh, you know it doesn't come with a manual really right. no matter how much literature is out there uh, so i hired a doula mm. And I went to a midwife. Wow. And oh my, what a difference it made. It made all the difference, really. You know, I was so confident throughout pregnancy and I enjoyed every bit of it. And um, any kind of questions and doubts, they're there. Yeah, they're they have experience. They're like your mothers and your aunts with like so much more experience. Yes, evidence based scientific education. Exactly. Yeah. They are, yeah, they're educated. So this doula was, uh, had 25 years experience wow. and midwife had another 25 years of experience. Ooh, combined and 50 years of experience. 50 years of experience, experience you're like you're, you know Sorted. you're safe. Yeah. You know, you're, even with that long labor, mm. I was assured that baby is wow. okay, I'm okay. And you know, if I was strong, wow. I could just go on. And I've n I never knew that I was that strong until I had to test, until I was tested. You know, yeah, and uh, same thing. You want you want to increase the increase the chances of having a healthy child. Mm. One, uh, also because you are that age that there are more risks. I was thirty eight when I did mm. the work, mm. so you did your best. So I was like kickboxing before I got pregnant. So you're very strong. So exactly. you were able to, yeah, you know, withhold all the pain wow. from but that's labor. Amazing. You know, it's like your birth. Maybe you discovered yourself all over again. <laughs> So much more. Yeah. I, I, I was reborn, literally, literally. So you know what I did? Thing. So you know what I used to do only lately I, I kind of forgot to do? I would treat myself to a gift every birthday. <laughs> Not my birthday, every birthday of my son. <laughs> Yourself to a gift? Oh my God. Oh yeah, because come on. It was a very important day and uh, worked so hard oh. and I was so proud for wow. um, for sticking to what I believed so much. No, no epidural, nothing. I didn't want chemicals in my body because my studies show and the, the statistics show, the literature shows that this much exposure to whatever, you know, chemicals is, you know, linked to this and this and this. Learning disabilities, all kinds of, uh, I don't, I mean, nobody wants that for yeah. your child, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So you do your best. So that's what I was doing yeah. that's what I was doing and then you leave it to the mother nature, nature you know <laughs> to do the best that they c it can do yeah. so yeah take care of yourself and um, it's never too late uh, I can really help and I am very grateful for all these books that came to my life and this doula and midwife how much I have learned 
how much I've learned that right. I'm able to share with people now. My client who come uh, with all kinds of issues, right? And you right. know, as a mother, you just know, mm -hmm. you just know mm -hmm. uh, how to uh, share your wisdom and help. Yeah, from mothers are my uh, mothers and children are my favorite. Uh, uh, kind of people since I became a mother obviously because you relate to them right. better and and also I know how confusing and how helpless one can feel I remember those feelings how helpless I felt and, and that's absolutely okay yeah. yesterday yeah. I got a mother calling me she said uh, for 10 years she couldn't conceive and she had this child through IVF now every day she holds the child she's very very anxious and worried and tense mm. I'm like Wow, welcome to motherhood. That's yeah. what everyone feels. Exactly. I mean, the there's perfect, no right way of Yeah, doing exactly. It. Everyone goes through that. It goes through that. Everyone. And there is no, there is nothing like, oh, you, you'll hold a baby and you'll never feel confident that, oh, you know how what to do. Exactly. There's a lot of fear. There's a lot of yeah. flutters happening every moment holding that little one. Yeah. It's not such an easy it's, thing. It's not at all. Not at all an and easy it's thing. Such, such a wonderful thing, right? That all the moms in this world are doing such a fabulous job. They're relearning all they want everything. Is the best for their child right yeah, yeah. wonderful nice <laughs> journeys people are having and yes uh, we are there to help and support I mean you're doing all this work yeah p mothers there should really have um, uh, knowledge that that is what is going to make them strong and confident, confident. even when the child is growing mm -hmm. older right and you're always tested you're always tested nutritionally speaking or otherwise <laughs> and I think uh, constantly and learning is yourself such a big challenge for most mothers for themselves as well as the children because you like but the society is like that see yeah. it's a challenge for me as a professional as well yeah. you know you go for birthday parties what are you mothers feeding other ch feeding your children okay let's let's this, you know let's come to a, a conclusion that we will not serve that stuff that gives our children illnesses right the sugars and the deep fried and highly processed what are we doing what are we doing if the birthday parties are uh, you know natural <laughs> if everyone is doing that listen as a as a community we can make a, can difference. Make a difference true as a community we can make a difference one at a time listen and that's we're not, what we're trying to build yeah listen community of mothers mothers who yeah. know what to do yes. who are educated yeah. and who are, who are putting their foot up. down to all, yes. all the scrap exactly stand up to your rights and uh, demand for clean food to come to you demand for it because when we were growing up, we didn't have all these choices that we didn't, our parents didn't have this much no. struggle. No. Now we're having so much struggle. There's abundance and abundance of stuff that you should be eating. Eating, too. Yeah, I can go on and on and on and rant and rant and rant about this. Uh, but I think food. the final conclusion so. thing should be, we as mothers should take that stand one person at a time and together we, we should ensure a cleaner future for our children. Exactly, and demand at school lunch programs and stuff like that, you know, right. get involved get involved because they can make a difference mm. they learn at school and come and you know bring it to the house True. it's much harder for parents to teach children after a certain time it's the teachers and other children at school that they're learning from wow that's a very good don't you agree yeah I agree I never thought about it I haven't ever even thought about it till now really, <laughs> really? Yeah. The teachers have such authority yeah and as a as a group they learn together and they can make a big difference there Awesome. I think mother should volunteer at the school and check out what's happening in the nutrition department over there. See what their lunch programs are like. Right. Awesome. Thank you so much. <laughs>